Hi everyone, welcome back. In case you're new here, I'm Jonathan, your tech informant. I'm wishing every one of you a happy new year. In my last video, I talked about the difference between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, but in this video, I'll be creating a form using the HTML basics. The tools I'll be using for this tutorial is Visual Studio Code and Mozilla Firefox. So here I have my Visual Studio code opened with a file I named index.html and then my browser to the right. So I will start by creating an HTML tag. Here we have the HTML tag, which is a necessity for any HTML document. And then we have the head tag and the body tag in between. So here I won't need all this meta tag. I'm going to delete them. With the HTML here, we have the head tag and the body tag. And in between the head tag, we have the title tag. So this title tag is where you put the title of your web page. Anything you put in between the tag will reflect on this edge of your browser. So for this tutorial, I will be writing registration form. You can see the registration form is here. So when I go to the body, I'll be using the next tag, I'll be using H1 tag. This H1 tag is for headings. Like you know, in newspaper or blogs, we have the, ma the major heading and we have the subheadings and so on and so forth. So here the major heading for this page is registration form again. Then we can see here with a bold registration form. Then the next tag is the P tag that stands for paragraph tag. I will use this tag for instructional purpose. Please fill in the form with your details. Okay, just something like that. This is for instructional purpose. Fill in the form with your details. Then now we go into the form proper. Creating a form on a web page, we use the form tag to create the form element. So here I'm creating the form. Whatever element I'm going to use to capture the user's details must come in between the form. So the first element I'll be creating is the username where the user will put in their username. So I'll create it with the input tag. So here we have the attribute of type. So I'll maintain the text type. Then I'll give it an ID of username. Then give it a name, username as well. Here we can see a box that is now made available for the user to input their name. But when looking at this, if we have several of these box, there's no way the user can know which is meant for username, which is meant for password. What I will do, I have to create a label for this input. So before the input, so this label is meant for the input element below, which has a name of username. I'll just copy this name and paste it in this form. And then now write the label proper, username. can see that we have a label for this element so the user will know that this box is meant for the user to input their username this br take me to the next line so i'm going to create another element for imputing the password so before i create the elements let me create the label for keyword And then the input, the input type will be password, the ID, P word, and then the, the name of this element will be P word as well. So why did I use this password type here is because like in the first one that is text, when you make the input password, you see that the 
what you write inside will be hidden. So that's the difference between this password and text type. So let's move on to the next one. So for the gender, the input type we'll be using is the radio. We'll be using the radio type. The radio input type. Then after that, I have to specify the name. That's uh, the name of, I mean, the name for this gender, female. Then I have to create another one for male. This few code gives us this. The user can choose any of them, either male or female. So that will take us straight to the next in, uh, input element. So let's create a label for the date of birth. The ID for the date will be DOB. So the next one is the email. Let's create a label for the email. And then the input. Let's use test. Let's create a label for the address. Address might have more than two lines. So instead of using the input, we're going to use the text area. So you can see here the, the the row is very lengthy so we have to adjust it to and the address shouldn't be more than three lines so bring it down and then the column is okay let's create label for this new one nationality let's say the name is national then we're going to use another special tag select the select tag so we say this one is national the name national the id national so here this select tag has created this element here we can select so you wonder why why did i use this select instead of the normal input tag with this select like if you know what exactly you want from the user like we know the nations of the world let me say for example someone instead of typing india now types in India, maybe with due to typo error. When this runs into the database, you might be having a wrong output. So instead of allowing your user to make such mistake, you can streamline them to choose what you want them to have so that it won't affect the integrity of your database. So to create the options that they can choose here, we have the option tag that goes in between the select tag. So let's say the option the option let me start with nigeria then the next option um, india so this value is what when you click the submit button for this particular form this is the value that will, that will be sent to the database or wherever you want to capture. You want to store this information. I think this will do. So when we view it here, we can see these options are here. So that, that will lead us to our last tag we are going to use. It's just an input. We are going to create an input. The input type will be submit instead of text. You can see a button is, is here right now. So here I want to change the name of this button so i just put value submit so we can see that we've created a perfect registration form for user to impute their their data this is the registration form with basic html for you i know the form doesn't look attractive now so in my next video i will incorporate css file into it to make it look more appealing so if you have not subscribed, click the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that when I'll be releasing the CSS version of this tutorial, you will be alerted. If you have any comments, any question you want to ask, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Don't forget to learn something new in this new year. Thanks for watching. See you later.